Welcome to Playing With Science. We're going to be looking at some really fun experiments today that you can try at home, maybe change something and see what you can learn. All about playing with science. Hello, I'm Samantha from Twinkle and thank you so much for joining me today. Today is all about playing with shadows. Now shadows are everywhere, so this is why it's such a fun science to do some playing and experimenting with. You can probably even spot some behind me. There's a whole area of the film industry looking at light, like lighting directors, and animators for things like films and video games spend lots of time perfecting the shadows to make things look realistic. Before we get started on our experiments on shadows, we've had a few more photos sent in. So I'm just gonna share them with you now. The first one looks like you're having loads of fun with your science experiment. Thank you so much for sending that one in. And this looks like a yummy one of star constellations with marshmallows. And Elizabeth sent in her doing her bubble painting. She found smaller containers were harder to bow the bubbles in, but then made the best pictures because she got some really good bubbles with the small containers. She used an ice cube tray. That's really inventive. If you haven't already, do check out our bubble painting, Playing With Science, after this one. We had lots of fun when we did this, that one last. Shadows are everywhere. They're all over the place. If you look around now, how many shadows can you spot? In fact, once you start looking, it's almost hard to stop seeing them everywhere. So shadows can be found anywhere where there's light. Light can only travel in a straight line. A shadow is formed when something blocks the light. The light will continue past the object, but will not go through it, creating a shadow. The shadow will always be on the opposite side of the object as to where the light is coming from. Often the light is the sun, but there may be many other light sources and all sorts of different objects that form the shadows. What do you think the biggest shadow is? Now, I'm not actually sure on the answer to this question, so it might be something you want to look into and research. You could think it's when the moon passes in front of the earth and the sun is blocked by the moon, so there's a really big shadow, but that would mean everything would have to align and it might happen quite rarely as well. Or is it a big object on Earth that causes a shadow, such as a mountain or a building? Or maybe it's even a cloud. What do you think the biggest shadow is that you can find today? This is such a brilliant play with science because you don't actually need very much equipment at all. I've got a few objects, a torch, a ruler and some pencils, but actually you could just go outside to look at shadows or just look around wherever you are. So the first thing we're gonna do is just look at the shadows that are being formed by an object. I am starting with a little block, just to show the shadow that is being formed by my block. I'm gonna put my torch, I'm just gonna put my torch on the little stand. And you can see the shadow being formed by the block. Now this is a really fun one for young children because they can practice their hand-eye coordination, drawing around the block and drawing around the shadow. But also for older children, because they can spend time doing some measuring. So they can measure, for example, the distance from the light to the block, or how long the shadow is, or even they could try and work out the area if you uh, did your shadows on graph paper. Shadows are very simple, because that's our experiment. However, we'd like to change something so we can learn something new. In this experiment, I'm going to start by changing how far my light is from my block. So I'm gonna move it a bit further away. There you go. And then I'm gonna use a different color pencil to draw the shadow. And you can actually see how the shadow's changed. This is a great one to talk about with your children about the observations and what you can see experiment. So has it got taller? Has it got longer? What words would you do to describe it? Have the edges got fuzzier or are they still very straight? What other things could we change in our experiment? We could change the object. So now rather than a block, I've got a little wooden flingo. So I'm gonna see what shadow that makes. Sheet. Oh, and it's a little flamingo shape. So again, we can talk about the differences of this. And what's also really fun about shadow drawing is you could cut out these afterwards or you could then use them to make pictures and colour them in with all sorts of different decorations. Now, what could we change with this experiment? 
Well, I've already done how far away the light could go. So this time I'm actually going to change which way my object is facing. So I'm going to change the position of my object. And you can just about see there that the object has actually made a rectangular shadow now. So that's something really interesting about shadows. They don't always make the same shape as the object. So you can have lots of fun seeing what the most unusual shape you can make with your object is. By changing the position of the object, you can change the shadow that it's made. So what did we change? We changed the position of the object. And what did we learn? We learned that different shadows can be made by the same object. This is a great one to do inside. However, if you've got lots of outside space, you might like to go outside in the sunlight and take some chalk and draw around your shadows. If you put a little X on the floor, you can stand on the same spot and then see how your shadow changes throughout the day. When we were playing with this science experiment, we changed where the sun was in the sky. And we learned your shadow moves in all the way around. We love the picture we made. It almost looks like someone's dancing by the end of the day. We've looked at so many different things you could change to play with shadows. One more I'm gonna tell you about, and I wonder if you can work out what it is that we haven't talked about yet. So we could also change the color of the light. Now, a really easy to do, way to do this with your torch is if you've got some little sweet wrappers, lying about you can just use those to change the colour of your torch. So let's have a look and see what happens when we change the colour of our torch to our shadows and see what we can learn. So we've got a red torch now with our red wrappers on and what I'm going to do is just turn the torch on and you can see with a red light I've still got a black shadow. Well that's quite interesting. I wasn't sure what colour it was going to be anything else we could change? Well we could try a different colour light to turn another different torch on. With a yellow light, yep, yeah, I've still got a black shadow. But what happens if I mix the two together? So I'm going to turn my red light on now as well. So I've turned my red light on and actually what I have made now over here is a red shadow and over here I've got like a yellowy shadow from where this torch is light is being blocked but this torch can still get its light so there is and there is a very black one in the middle where both torches meet and block out both the red and the yellow light. I'm just going to put one more torch in I've got a bluey torch here so I've got some blue wrappers on it and oh wow that's incredible so because of the blue torch it's mixing with the lights and it's also being blocked in some areas by the shadow. So there's actually a really kind of orangey colour now and there's also a yellowy colour and a bluey colour. This is fascinating. When we change the colour of our light, we learnt that the shadow is still black. But if you use more than one light source, you can make all sorts of different coloured shadows. Now this is a really good one to try at home because actually seeing the light in real life rather than on the screen looks incredible. And it's a really good one to try and draw as well to see if you can match those colours up. So have lots of fun with that experiment. If you've enjoyed today's Playing With Science, you'll love all of the extra twinkle sheets all about shadows. They cover so many different areas of PowerPoints, quizzes, worksheets, even some poetry on shadows. Do let us know in the comments below or on the Twinkle Home Education Facebook page how you've got on playing with shadows, what did you change and what did you learn and have lots of fun playing with science. We look forward to seeing you again soon.